I, I'm very pleased that we are now have two European commissioners, or two former European commissioners around the table, because I'm sure that at least both of you can explain to us why Philip is absolutely right and why the European Union and the European Commission in particular completely failed in even making an attempt to have a common European identity. Well, um, can I say that uh, one of the eight basic skills that we are supposed to give our youngsters uh, by the com time of completion of uh, compulsory education is cultural sensitivity and cultural expression. But of course, curricula is up to the education ministers, the national education ministers to decide. And I wonder how many have included that in the curricula. I really doubt it. How do you, how do you include cultural awareness in the curriculum? I mean, I mean uh, languages would be one very important thing. No one, no English person speaks a foreign language. I mean, it's just one of they, those. They, they, they <laughs> simply <laughs> ignore the other languages. <laughs> Whereas Europeans, I mean, continental Europeans are very good at languages. Yeah. There's one exception, well. of course. Um, I lived in Paris for a while and people told me, <laughs> <laughs> if you speak three languages, you're trilingual. If you speak two languages, you're bilingual, and if you speak one language, you're French. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Italians yeah. are terrible. Are they? Oh, yeah, yeah. The Italians are but terrible. But anyway, Fritz, you have been in the European Commission for yeah. whatever, four years, six years? Five years. Five years, <laughs> right. What have you done there, you know, to help us to have a European identity? Very little. <laughs> <laughs> both culture, <coughs> both the concept of culture and the concept of Euro European Federation do not help me as a practical politician in <coughs> confronting the three problems that I had mentioned. But perhaps we still have 45 minutes. <coughs> uh, I can, uh, it, it will come to us uh, in, in the if remaining if time. If I may ask you, are you a European? <coughs> I am a Dutch citizen and therefore I am a European. Because all this nonsense about feeling European is nothing compared to reality. European is a person who is a, um, a legitimate subject of a country that belongs to the European Union. Mr. Morgenstern, I find that admirable in your pragmatism, but I simply don't agree. Um, You're thinking of the Norwegians. <laughs> no, but I, if I had, didn't have a Euro pass, European passport, if by some ghastly historical occurrence I was exiled to Papua New Guinea, um, I, would feel, I would still feel European. But and I would feel that because <coughs> of the way I'd grown up. Whether that is a particularly good thing, I think it has many good aspects. I think it also has very many hi highly problematic aspects. But I don't think it just resides in a passport. That is politically uh, an impractical approach. A totally impractical <laughs> approach. <laughs> and it is, it, one cannot hand feelings like that. <laughs> Politics deals with facts. And, and uh, you're being exiled to Venezuela and still feeling European uh, is not a fact that can be handled in European politics. Yeah.